right. We're going to talk about that. Well, good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? All right. Well, I want to thank the American Conservative Union for asking me to be here today, and thank you for all being here as well. It's an honor to be able to be on stage following President Trump. I heard he did very well, right? My friend, Vice President Mike Trump, Mike Trump, Mike Pence, and all the other great speakers you've had. It's a tough act to follow on Wayne LaPierre, huh? He did a fantastic job. And I gotta tell you, I'm so pleased with this administration so far. I mean, think about the people they have chosen. Now, I'm biased because I'm a governor. But you look at the governors they've chosen to be in this administration, like, of course, Vice President Mike Pence, President, or the uh, Ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, Governor of South Carolina. Yeah? Terry Branstad, Governor of Iowa, to be the Ambassador to China. And while he's not a governor, we have worked with him very closely. Scott Pruitt, the new administrator for the EPA. That's a big deal. And it's great to be here and exciting to be talking about real policies that are going to advance individual freedom and states' rights and our liberties, as opposed to talking about the Obama administration's continued overreach on those freedoms. In fact, as one of those states, we were working with Scott Pruitt on suing the federal government. We were suing the Department of Education, the Department of Labor, and the EPA on several different counts. And now we can talk about common sense policies. On January 20th, that, that pendulum has started swinging back to be able to start making government work for the people, start putting policies in place that will actually increase the prosperity of America. And that's why it's so exciting to be here today. And that's what we're focused on in the states. How do we make government work for the people? You know, as I travel around Nebraska, I talk to people all over the place. Americans are frustrated because all too often, government doesn't work. They see it in the mounting federal debt, the overregulation, the thousands of pages of rules, agencies that don't work, veterans that can't access services. People want government to work, that's all they want, and too often it doesn't. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I think I was hired to bring my business experience to making government run more like a business, to make it more effective and more efficient. Now, I get some pushback on that sometimes from people who say, oh, that's not what government can do. In fact, our previous president, Obama, in a speech last fall in Silicon Valley, said that government can't run like a business because, by definition, democracy is messy. Well, let me tell you, business can be messy too. And his statement, demonstrates a profound misunderstanding of how organizations work, which is probably why the federal government under his watch was so poorly run. Because the same things that make any organization successful, any business successful, work for nonprofits, work for governments, work for sports teams. It starts with establishing a vision for what you're going to do. And then communicating that vision out so that everybody knows what that is. Getting the right people on board. And then holding them accountable. Four easy things. It was those four things that my family used with the Chicago Cubs. Yeah. That's right, go Cubs, go. Back in 2009, we purchased that family. And led by my brother Tom, we set out a vision that included bringing a championship to Chicago, fixing Wrigley Field, and being a good neighbor. He communicated that strategy out so that everybody knew it. So even in seasons where we lost 100 games, our season ticket holders knew what we were going to do and why we were building for the future. He brought the right people on board, people like Theo Epstein and Joe Madden. And of course, last year delivered on that World Championship Series. We're also fixing Wrigley Field right now to last for the next 100 years. And we've greatly increased the amount of money that we have put back into the community through Cubs Charities. 
So you see, those things work for a sports team, they work for business, and they work for government as well. And that's what we've been doing in Nebraska, bringing those same ideas to how we can make government work better. You know, for example, one of the things we've done is we've put everybody in my agencies, all my agencies, through Lean Six Sigma White Belt training to help them understand why we do process improvement, why it's important to look at how we serve our customers. We've created a center for operational excellence on how we deliver those services. We've created a vision to grow Nebraska. And our mission statement is to create opportunities through more effective, more efficient, and more customer-focused government. We're putting in the things in place to be able to measure our success and hold people accountable. And that's how we drive results. You know, too often, it's easy to look at government budgets as a collection of numbers and rows and columns next to agencies and programs. But behind those numbers are people's lives. They're the dollars that are the hard-earned money of our taxpayers, our families, who give that up for us to run our operations. We also provide services to uh, many of our citizens, some of whom are people in need. How we deliver those services says a lot about who we are and how we think about those taxpayers and those customers. Are we being good stewards of their money? Are we providing good service to the people we're supposed to? Let me share with you a couple of examples of how we've done that in Nebraska. In one of the areas, when I took over, we had several of our agencies who were on the verge of crisis. The Nebraska legislature established oversight committees to investigate poor performance and mismanagement. But by putting things in place to hold people accountable in that process improvement, we started turning that around. In our call centers, we took the hold time down from a high of nearly 24 minutes down to an average of five minutes. First of all, we started by setting a target, and then we hit that 11 out of 12 months last year. Uh, 11 out of 12 months last year. We took the time to, to process things like the SNAP applications down from 40 days to 10 days. We've been getting millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars in fines from the federal government. And by improving those things, we avoided a $17 million fine. That's what businesses do all the time. They figure out ways to do a better job providing services and bring costs down. We changed our unemployment system in our Department of Labor to a reemployment system by requiring everybody seeking those benefits to sit down with a jobs coach first and create a resume that was searchable online. And in doing so, we have helped people get to back to work faster. And in fact, last year, we paid out $14 million fewer in claims than we did the previous year. And because we had reduced the amount of claims, we could reduce taxes. We reduced our unemployment insurance tax from 1% to 0.75%, saving Nebraska businesses $17.6 million this year. That's how you do a better job of providing services and lowering your costs. Now that's also important, because when we do that throughout all of our agencies and start controlling those costs, that's how we provide tax relief as well. Not just in areas like the unemployment insurance, but I've got a proposal this year working with our chair of our revenue committee to start lowering our income tax rate, to take it down from that high of 6.84% to get it under 6% in a series of steps, about a tenth percent of the time. And we're gonna put a trigger in place to make sure that we can manage that in our budget. But the key to tax relief is controlling spending. Fundamentally, tax relief is the difference between spending restraint and revenue growth. So we focused on the budget. Prior to becoming governor, our budget was growing at 6.5% a year. Folks, that's not sustainable. In the first budget that I worked on with the legislature, we cut that growth nearly in half to 3.6%. And now this year, because our revenues are coming in below forecast, we're not going to raise taxes. I propose a budget package that will get us back into balance without raising taxes. In fact, we cut that growth of government in half again to propose 1.7%. We will still deliver the essential services we're supposed to provide. Investments in K-12 education, 
tax relief, and reforming some of our agencies. And we will do all that while balancing our budget, not raising taxes, and setting ourselves up for that future tax relief. That's how you make government work for the people. And that's what the people want. We've got to get back to the basics. We've got to do the blocking and tackling of how we deliver services. And that's where governors come into play, because that's what we do. And by doing this, we can show that we care about our taxpayers, that we're being good stewards of their money, and that we're delivering the services to, for the people who expect us to provide those services and who need our help. That says a lot about how we think about the people we are elected to represent. And that's what your Republican governors are doing all across this country. Figuring out ways to be able to do a better job, reducing costs, and putting those innovations and those reforms in place to make sure that we can provide tax relief while providing our services. It is an exciting time right now because one of the biggest barriers we've had is the overregulation coming from the federal government. This administration has already demonstrated that they are going to push the power out of Washington, D.C. and back to the states where it belongs. They know that it wasn't the federal government that created the states, it was the states that created the federal government. Yes. And that is where the power properly belongs. We want the responsibility. We will do a great job. And that's again why it's so important to have organizations like the American Conservative Union and the State Policy Network to create the policies to help us form those policies in the states to be able to do a better job and make sure that we continue that into the federal government. So again, I'm grateful to the American Conservative Union and the State Policy Network for allowing me to be here today and for their guidance on policy and what they'll do as we go forward. Thank you all for being here as well because we can't do what we do as politicians without you. God bless you all in your work and God bless the United States of America.